Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Scuba Tube. In today's show, Mark and myself are going to be talking about a wreck found in Alabama, uh, Australian subs, my Kickstarter project, even though it's not Kickstarter, uh, <laughs> uh, pick of the week, and of course, Mark's going to review the uh, product that you guys voted for. So let's get straight into the news. So researchers have been using drones to learn how whales respond to noise pollution. Uh, now, we all know that whales use sound to communicate, uh, navigate, and find food, but what happens I'm just gonna say just like pretty much everyone. I don't use sound to communicate. <laughs> or to find food. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> there's the burger. Um, anyway, sorry. So yeah, so, uh, so what actually happens when you fill their habitat with the uh, noisy ship traffic? Well, Dr. Lee Torres from Oregon State University is leading a new research project to find out. Uh, with the help of drones, her team is going to find out how noise pollution interferes with the whales. Uh, also see the effects, if it affects their health as well. I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be yes, it's going to affect them. It's yeah. going to be pretty obvious. Uh, there you go, save money again. <laughs> I've already given you the answer, guys. It's a one-page thesis. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so the research team have uh, have started to make regular trips to the ocean uh, off the coast of Newport, which is a prime feeding area for grey whales. Uh, so far, her research suggests that human noise can drown out whale calls, and whales that live near noisy areas tend to be more stressed. Ah, so these grey whales, all they want to do is eat, and then they go. Mm. Yeah, but they can't find one another because it's just noise. Yeah. So they're using drones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, <laughs> they've only just started the research and things aren't looking good as a, as, 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 as a species, us humans don't have suck. Yeah. We're pretty rubbish, yeah. we're pretty rubbish. And if you're wondering how they find out if the whale's stress, well, the answer's in the poop. It's all about the, it's all about the poop. Like anybody. Yep, poop. <laughs> yep, it's all about the poop. So uh, the more poop, uh, the, obviously the whales produce, the more the researchers can tell how stressed the whales really are. Yeah, so it's all about the poop. All about the poop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so on that note, let's move swiftly on to our <laughs> next your story. Job? I'm playing with whale birds yeah. to see if they're crying uh. about drone noises. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so again, it's us humans that are ruining things, unfortunately. Uh, experts have warned that Australian submarines are facing the risk of running into foreign vessels. <laughs> running. <laughs> they don't have legs. <laughs> Silly. Um, yeah, so, uh, so they're running the risk of running into foreign vessels and even whales in the Pacific. It's careless. Yeah, I know. So the Submarine Institute of Australia said that sub numbers uh, were surging in the region uh, due to the increase of China's militarization. Damn you, China! Uh, with the increase, sadly, uh, well, with this increase, sadly, it's the whales that are actually going to truly suffer. Yeah, so whales give off uh, what they call false positives through sonar. Is that like um, a double negative? False positive? A false positive. No, it means that it shows up on their screen as something, but it's not actually what it should be. Think back to um, the hump of the Red October. Oh, okay. And they hear from whales. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it, basically the noises that the whales make makes them sound like an enemy submarine. Uh, yeah. And because subs use low frequency, just like the whales, uh, this can also cause confusion for the whale. Yeah. So, anyway, back in 2013, a British warship killed three whales, mistaking them for an enemy sub. So, we know this problem <laughs> is... Scroll. Thank you. Uh, a real threat. Uh, so let's just hope they sort something out sooner rather than later. Anyway, let's move on to something more positive. Please. Uh, please. Okay. <laughs> the votes are in. <clears throat> they have been counted. All three of them. All three. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's all right. And the winner is... The Neptune Space G dive mask. Full face mask. Full face mask. Yeah, IDM. Uh, the IDM uh, with the full percent of the vote. So Mark, talk about it. So yeah, so Neptune Space G Diver. Full face masks are great for, they got lots of different benefits. The first one is, is that if you're diving in really cold water, your face is completely isolated, so your face stays dry. Uh, you can breathe through your nose and your mouth. Uh, you can communicate with other people because you can have underwater communications yeah. fitted. Um, that, hold on, sorry to interrupt, but is this the same thing that we used when we did the underwater yeah. signals? Yeah, yeah. And we used that mask. Ah. Yes. Um, so, um, so yeah, lots of benefits. Downsides are, yeah, the initial cost is quite high. Uh, it's not as much as a second stage. Uh, if something goes wrong and you need to bail out, you lose your eyesight as well as your breathing. So you always have to carry a backup mask. So you can just- You're really selling this. Ditch that, put your octo in, mask, clear it. Uh, they're quite buoyant on your face. 
uh, because instead of just having a small mask on your face, you suddenly have this huge like an air pocket air pocket in front yeah. of your face, so it can make you want to kind of look up at times. Um, but overall, they are a benefit. I've used them out in open water, and they are very comfortable because um, you don't get that kind of jaw fatigue. You can breathe through your nose and your mouth, so your uh, your breathing rate naturally drops. Uh, I think um, you know. I think what well, th this sort of thing is like. If it's more mass produced, mm. more people do it, it'll get cheaper and it will be eventually probably will be become the norm. The norm. Yeah. yeah. The other downside is at the end of the dive trying to get your kit off, your face is tethered to your BCD. Oh. But if you're on the surface, you can take it off. It just means that you don't have a mask to, uh, to see if a wave splashes. Um, well, man up. <laughs> be right. No, it does look cool. Uh, yeah, over, they are very cool. They're very yeah. cool. Go, yeah. go, if you want to treat yourself, just go buy one. Anyway, so now voting's open, uh, so click on the card that's just popped up, up above. Uh, and, uh, you know, then you can vote for uh, what Mark, product Mark's is going to review teeth in your mouth, Sean, for next week's show. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully you did not understand that. <laughs> <laughs> they know what you mean. Click on it. Oh, click on thing. that thing. Yeah. There'll be three things to choose from. Uh, so our last story is about a wreck that's been found in Alabama's Gulf Coast. Uh, the wreck in question has been hidden amongst the mud for well over 150 years. Uh, this isn't just any wreck, uh, if expert suspicions are correct though. <laughs> get the uh, mystery machine out, get, those, <laughs> get the Scooby Crew, no, what were they called? Uh, mystery... I don't know. Gang. No, it wasn't the mystery gang. Mystery, there you go, Thanks, nice one, James. James. There you go, you compute. He watches every Saturday yeah, morning. Every Saturday morning in his jimmies. <laughs> it's like literally that far away from the telly. Anyway, so the wreck is thought to be that of the Cortilia. Oh no, I had it for a second. No. The Cortilda. Clotilda? C Clotilda, I've completely butchered that. Uh, anyway, which is the last known ship to bring human cargo, aka slaves, uh, from Africa to the US. So archeologists and historians uh, have been trying to find the wreck for a very, very long time. Yeah, uh, so the ship itself was burnt down in 1860 by slavers seeking to hide their evidence uh, of their illegal trafficking. But, uh, but, but thanks you. But thanks you. Thanks to. Thanks to, to the rather low tide. <laughs> uh, but thanks to the rather low tides, uh, the ship was spotted on the waters, or sort of lack, lack of, of water, waters, we should say. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. this is pretty cool. So yeah, several experts have examined the wreck so far, and they're convinced that it's actually the ship. I'm not going to say that word again. <laughs> um, but of course, they need to be. You know, there needs to be more time to be 100%. You know, confident and to confirm this. All they have to do now is wait to get federal for, to get federal permits so they can actually start digging on the site. So yeah, they can't just go. <laughs> they need to get a permit, and yeah, obviously. If it's buried in the mud, that's going to take forever. Yeah, because obviously they've only got the, the literally like the outline of it. So they've got to get the full whatever the frame is. But the good thing is obviously because it's been in mud, it's, it's preserved. preserved. Yeah. It's like I live off the coast of Whitstable where literally every week a ship is found from <laughs> yonder. But it's just in from mud. The days of yore. The, the days of yore, so <laughs> pre-2000. Uh, okay, so let's end the show on a positive note. So Sean, what Kickstarter product have you chosen? It is not a Kickstarter product. It is again an Indiegogo. I think we're probably going to have to rename it. Actually, no, it's 50%. I think we've done two Kickstarters and now two Indiegogo. People, yeah, so. we know, they know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll rename it a different subject. Anyway, so I've picked the Pro Shot Touch, which is for the iPhone. So if you're not too sure what this is, it's basically an underwater phone case, which can go to around about 130 feet. Oh, okay. I thought it said, I thought it said 50 feet on it. On the thing, no, it said 100 feet, 130 feet I've got on there. Okay, that's better than the 50 feet. I, I was going to say, yeah. Woo, look at that. It's like 18 meters. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a case you can stick your iPhone in. Uh, I think it takes even even the, the, the latest iPhone. Um, it uses the buttons on your volume control and obviously your on-off button, your standby button to actually control the, um, the camera. Yeah. So there's an app you download as well, I'm guessing. You put your phone in there and then you can take your pictures, you can take your videos, and it's all powered through those three buttons, the on off and the volume up and down, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I have preservations about taking my phone underwater yeah. because I'm very clumsy. Yeah, if that floods, that's 600 quid down the drain. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah, that's the point. Like, you could spend 
600 plus quid on a phone, and then I think the case is around about $120, um, so yeah, about 100 quid, here or there. Um, you've got those, so that's, yeah, that's gonna be about seven to 800 pounds, obviously, depending on, and it's an iPhone, so you know it's expensive yeah. out, out the go, it's not gonna be, you can't put it on a cheaper Android model. So you've got that, and then, yeah, you could either flood it, but then you've got no phone and you've got no camera, <laughs> or you can drop it, and you have no phone and you have no camera, or you could somehow the pressure like the pressure could interfere like when 130 feet's all right yeah that's like going on 40 meters yeah so that should be fine it's just one you don't have any touch screen yep you don't literally it's the the volumes and the on off so yeah you can whatever mode it's in when it goes down and if it goes to sleep that's it because you can't put your thumbprint on yeah it. yeah <laughs> it's like, you just have to rely on keep touching the just <laughs> Rather than diving, you just press all these buttons to get it to work. I yeah, know, I like my dive camera. Yeah, I think like I mean, you, you can get a, you can get a fairly decent one. You can get a fake GoPro, can't you, for about hundred quid, mm. hundred and fifty pounds. I'd rather spend that, that. So I'd rather spend twenty bucks more, twenty dollars more, or whatever, and get a whole four K pressurized camera. So yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, I do apologise about that, our oh, camera cow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it looks really cool. It'll do the job. It's just whether you want to take your phone. I mean, have you guys taken your phone when you go scuba diving? Mm. I mean, the, the advantage of it is, is that with your phone, you've got all your pictures. You've got your 4K camera, depending on what iPhone. Oh, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not the Google Pixel. What is that? The Google Pixel 2. <laughs> just saying that, mate. Yeah, I've got That's this. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I have reservations. It's I think a, it's a better idea than turning your iPhone into your dive computer. Yes. Oh my that. life. Yeah. Why, why on earth would you do that? Because I know what the battery life is like on an iPhone. Yeah. I Especially if you've got an old one where they're purposely slowing it down and like just playing around with it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Let's know if you guys think that's a cool idea and if you use it. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, so and there we have it. Another scuba tube done for the week. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, why not give us a thumbs up? Uh, and to our YouTube family, why not give us a thumbs up, share this vid, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. To why are you not like subscribed it? to our channel? We're nearly uh, 21,500. We're nearly there. So you guys have smashed it this this month. I think we had well over a thousand subscribers. We're normally, you know, we're over 500 to 800. So to hit a thousand, guys, is, is awesome. So thanks for that. Uh, anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching. And safe diving. Yeah, totally well off script. Bye. <laughs> Number three, blowing the water out to clean the cylinder from Ryan Henderson on 10 mistakes that newbie divers make. You'll hear this on most dive boats and it scares the bejesus out of you. As someone randomly opens up a cylinder valve on the dive deck just to get a minute amount of water out of the valve. This only serves to give the rest of the boat and the crew a heart attack as it can be quite loud. What's worse is if you do it right next to your regulator, you can actually blow water into your first stage, which is what you were trying to avoid in the first place. 